Aliyah story, take one. Or two, or three. Actually, my Aliyah story is really about two or three takes. And it's about returning and different kinds of return. My name is Yossi Bramwitz. My wife, Rabbi Susan Silverman, and I and five children made Aliyah on a glorious sunny day from Boston to Kibbutz Ketura in the Arava on August 24, 2006. A date seared in our memory. But I get ahead of myself. Let's do Aliyah take one. August 1969. My young parents, buoyed by the historical miracle of the victory of the Six-Day War, decide that we're going to get on a boat, the Queen Anna Maria, that's my brother Adam and that's me, and make Aliyah to this very young state. It's before Nefesh B'Nefesh, and we arrive in Haifa on September 1st, 1969. Look at the uh, idealism and the um, sense of adventure in, in my parents' eyes. It's really extraordinary to think of how radically they changed their life from Brighton Beach, uh, New York, with, again, filled with ideas and idealism and a sense of being part of something much, much larger than themselves. We were in Nazareth uh, uh, for, I think, six or nine months in a Jerusalem, Merkaz Klita, and we moved to a brand newly liberated neighborhood called Ramat Eshkol in the bunkers of Kivat Tachmosh, it was our, our playground. We were in Israel for three years, and then we went back to the States. So my dad gave his PhD uh, at Brandeis in social work, and when he was in Israel, he was working on the welfare system with Teddy Kolek in Jerusalem. But when we were in the States, my parents got divorced. We never came back. So I was on Young Judea year course to fabulous Kibbutz Ketura, a young idealistic community, 1982-83, Young Judea year course. Head meat chef, not too shabby. Well, now for a vegetarian. And boy, like I just fell in love all over again, not only with the country, but in particular this values-based community. And it's like, I'm never leaving. And I had a girlfriend at the time from the kibbutz, and she said, look, you have a scholarship, go to school. If you want to come back afterwards, come back afterwards. Well, it took some time. But uh, sure enough, in uh, 2006, with some help from Nefesh, we landed uh, in Israel. And so that was sort of a take two, right, uh, in terms of our personality and our story. Um, and it was a hot, sunny day. And so, in this country, I've had the privilege to be part of uh, a revolution in terms of Israel's place among the nations uh, as a startup nation for Tikkun Olam. Uh, put together the team with partners and an impact investors to create the solar industry in the state of Israel. And take three in terms of homecoming. Ready? I, I have a ring here. I don't know how much you can see. But this is a ring from the Second Temple period, King Yochinus, who um, uh, was the last of the kings who was also a Maccabean high priest. And it happens to be a son on this coin from the Second Temple. And so that's a, that's a larger homecoming, right? And so I, I, I wear it to back zap bad guys. Uh, uh, we're trying to stop solar here in, uh, in Africa. So there's a, there's a personal narrative here, and we all have, Aliyah is ultimately very personal, but there's a grand historic kind of sweep. And for me, it, it's such a natural fit, kind of a change the world kind of guy. Um, and we figured out a business model uh, for Tikkun Olam. So when we got to Ketura, it was hot, it was sunny, it was the third most extreme desert in the world on August 24th. Open the air conditioned van, boom, hit with heat that you don't get in Boston. And the last rays of the, of the setting sun are just like a cartoon, just burning us like Superman laser beams. <laughs> and I say to myself, I'm sure the whole place works on solar power. And of course, one thing led to the other, and we formed the Arava Power Company I'm with the kibbutz, with my friend David from uh, New Jersey, um, and 120 individual impact investors. And the dream was grand. And you can do that in Israel. That's part of the, like, the whole notion of Coming back to your homeland after 2,000 years, that's pretty wild and crazy. So to try to say, hey, let's get Eilat and the Aravah to be 100% solar by 2020, 
That's not so crazy in the historical scheme of things, right? The one moment I would never ever forget of the launch of the Middle East first solar field, let alone Israel's, and fulfillment of Ben Gurion's vision, in a sense also part of Herzl's. It was the launch day, World Environment Day. Actually, interesting, I hadn't thought of this. It, it, World Environment Day is also the eve, the anniversary of the eve of the, of the Six Day War that inspired my parents in the first place. We kind of picked it with a, I forgot about the personal piece there. So June 5th, um, we launched and um, it was glorious. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, David Broza performed, the ministers were there, the members of Knesset, the community, and then just as the sun was setting, true story, this was June, never ever happened, maybe before in history or afterwards, a little puffy cloud was just at the edge of that mountain, really the same spot where the first laser beams were, we made Aliyah, and the light hit it, and there was a rainbow in June in the Arava. Well, I'm really happy to say on this Aliyah day that if it wasn't for my Aliyah, there may not be solar power in the state of Israel, but certainly what's been true now for a whole month is that from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, that whole Arava Valley, including Eilat, is 100% daytime solar because it is 2020. We hit it. It may even be the first region in the world, which brings me back to the whole purpose of the Jewish people, right? Like if we're, we're supposed to be like a renewable light unto the nations, then this is, this is you know, our field of dreams in a sense. And, and entrepreneurship and risk-taking and dreaming and, you know, business plan dreaming in the context of historic dreaming, it's all, it's all acceptable. Uh, feeling is part of the culture too. And then you kind of pick yourself up and you go for more. And so if I was in America trying to break into solar, I probably wouldn't have had the same drive as trying to say, let's get Israel to be a world leader in something. That's been very satisfying, very satisfying as part of the Aliyah story. And then we're building the first field at Ketura. It's 2010, 2011, and people come from all over the world, 58 countries, and they said, hey, startup nation, now help us. And so there may not be solar power in Africa today because we, we were the first ones to do utility scale. If it wasn't for this original voyage a long time ago. So, look, between you and me, imperfect country. God. But we need you. We need you to make it better.